The Korean pro player Chovy is world renowned for two things, his farming and his laning. In fact, many argue he's the best player in the world when it comes to these two specific skills. And yet, anyone who has had the unfortunate reality of playing League of Legends for more than a few hours knows how hard it is to balance both last hitting and trading in lane. Every time you go aggressive to take winning trades, you end up forgetting to CS and fall behind in farm. And if you focus on your last hits, then you end up just getting poked out of lane and losing every trade. So how is it that Chovy is able to be so dominant in both? You'd think to a certain degree, to be good at one, you'd have to give up being good at the other. Well, that's exactly what you're going to learn in today's guide, how to get insanely high CS numbers while still being able to win your lane like the Korean god Chovy, all broken down into three simple rules you need to follow. But first, if you're feeling stuck at your current rank where you just can't rank up no matter how hard you try, then Skillcapped is the solution you've been looking for. We have the most extensive collection of premium courses tailored for every role. The best part is you can try our service completely risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcapped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted. All right, now the first rule that Chovy follows is to never trade during his own last hits. For example, here's a Korean challenger game where Chovy is playing Vex against Nico. The landing phase starts. The enemy Nico throws her Q at us. Great. Her one ability is on cooldown, so we move forward to go aggressive and land our own ability. Notice how this is fine to do since we have no last hits available. Now, as our melee minions get low on health and need to be last hit, Chovy is going to position more defensively, just looking to focus on his last hits. He's effectively standing at his max auto attack range to maximize the distance away from the enemy laner. Okay, so let's pause here. Notice how Chovy's E is about to come off cooldown, and we have no last hits we need to take. That's the trigger that we can look to go aggressive on if we want to, so we can see Chovy look to move forward. In this case, Vex just wants to land her E, which applies a gloom stack into an auto attack that will proc the stack for more damage. Here's the problem, though, that we can all relate to as we look to go aggressive the enemy just simply backs off and plays safe. This causes what we'll label the two auto attack problem. You can see how two caster minions are two auto attacks of damage away from being able to be last hit. It's very risky to trade during this timing, since if we use our E to trade and put it on cooldown, enough time passes that these minions will actually be low enough to then be last hit. And with our E on cooldown, it's very easy for Nico to go aggressive off this last hit timing. So check out this really simple mechanic Chovy uses to deal with this. So he's postured aggressively, looking to trade, but then he'll choose the lowest health minion and auto attack attack it. Notice how as soon as he auto attacks, he's immediately clicking away. This has nothing to do with Nico's positioning, as you can see Nico is actually walking away during this time. Then, once the enemy Nico realizes Chovy just put a minion low enough to be last hit, they try to go aggressive on that timing. However, notice the distance Nico has to walk to to get in range to damage Vex. This extra time it takes to get to Vex makes it so that Chovy can finish off his last hit and then trade right after, following his rule of never trading during your own last hits. Basically, here's the secret to getting uncontested farm like Chovy. It starts when you have no last it's available. You posture aggressively during this time. The goal here is not to just possibly land a winning trade, but if you actually hold your abilities due to the enemy backing off, you gain a lot of space in the lane and push the enemy back. With your newfound space, you can then auto attack a minion once it's two auto attacks away from dying. You then simply kite backwards. This immediate kite backwards will give you the room needed to finish the last hit without the enemy being able to time a trade off it. It can also, as we can see, trick the enemies into mistiming their aggression, as they end up being in range right as you finish your last hit, basically making them walk into a winning trade for you. All right, Right, so after this trade, Nico has her Q, while our E is on cooldown. Notice how Chovy is going to use space again to use the two auto attack kite back technique in order to secure this last hit without being traded back on. As the next wave arrives, our E is still on cooldown, but only for a few more seconds, so we play safe. Now, as soon as it's going to come off cooldown, notice how Chovy is going to use the same technique we just taught you. You can see one minion is getting low enough for him to have to last hit it any second, so he goes aggressive before he has to last hit. That way, he can create the space needed for him to back off during his last hit timing and auto attack it without being harassed. Now, since Nico used our Q, we have a cooldown advantage and can once again posture aggressively. Again, a super common scenario we're all familiar with happens. The enemy minion is low and needs to be lasted by the enemy Nico. This is a great time for us to land our combo and trade with them. At the same time though, our minion is low and needs to be lasted as well. In these spots, you can see how Chovy still prioritizes getting his last hits first. Then, once his last hits are out of the way, he will look to harass our trade. Here's the thing though, it goes much deeper than this. You see, most players, they only think one step ahead. For example, being aware of your next to last hit. Most people know this concept. When an enemy has to last hit, they'll be distracted and stationary, making it a great time to harass. Here's the thing most players don't realize though. You can actually anticipate the opponent's second last hit, thinking two steps ahead. You see, if we go back, look at the minion wave. If we just think one step ahead, we'll identify we'll have to last hit this blue 
melee minion, and Nico will have to last hit this red melee minion. However, let's think two steps ahead like Chovy. Think of what minion will have to be lasted after that. For us, it will be one of the other melee minions. It's too early to know for certain which one. For Nico, it's clearly going to be this melee minion that's very low in health. By thinking two steps ahead, Chovy knows to handshake on both of their last hit timings so that he can then punish the enemy's next last hit timing right afterwards when he doesn't have any last hits of his own. Also, notice again that common theme. By timing our aggression before our last hits, it often means the enemy will be too far away to then punish us on our CS timing. Okay, let's play a few more seconds and then pause. Chovy, up until this point, has perfect CS. He hasn't missed a single one. However, he's about to be faced with a scenario you're going to be in every single game. All of our abilities are on cooldown. However, minions are progressively getting lower in health, requiring us to last hit soon. The problem is, we don't have abilities up to threaten a trade and create space for us like before. So, what's the solution? Well, usually, you just want to back off and give up the last hit. Sometimes, due to minion RNG, you'll have to last hit during a timing that's too dangerous no matter how well you play. With that being said though, there is a very advanced trick you can consider using. So, notice how before the minion dies, Chovy will look to trade auto attacks with the enemy. This is for two reasons. First, by forcing Nico to Q him in this trade, it means it will be on cooldown when Chovy's abilities come off cooldown in a second, giving him a timing window. Second, this is super advanced, but when the opponent auto attacks you, they'll take minion aggro. This minion aggro means your minions stop damaging the enemy minions. You can you can see here how once Nico auto attacks Vex, Vex's minions focus her and stop damaging the enemy minions. Unfortunately, Chovy just ever so slightly mistimed this and his minions got one last auto attack off, causing him to miss the last hit. But you can actually see this advanced mechanic used successfully shortly after. Notice how in this trade, Nico auto attacks Vex, this pulls minion aggro, and so even though his caster minion only has 14 health, it doesn't die to Chovy's minions since they're too busy focusing Nico. This buys him the time necessary to then last hit it. And there's actually one more super important mechanic Chovy used during that trade. So, if we go back to this frame, when you have your main poke ability off cooldown, you always want to be on the lookout for this situation, where an enemy is positioned so you can land both the ability on the enemy champion and last hit at the same time. If you're able to kill minions with your abilities when you harass, you're removing the amount of times the opponent will get to harass you off your last hits. If we fast forward a bit, you can see Chovy use this exact mechanic again. He sets up his minions to be low enough to last hit them with an ability, which allows him to both harass and last hit at the same time, giving him a massive advantage. And again, if we we fast forward a few seconds, you'll see how he spots Nico lined up with last hits, allowing him to both harass and last hit at the same time. Now, as this next wave arrives, the main concepts we just taught you will be used repeatedly. New wave arrives, we have our abilities off cooldown, and so we look to posture aggressively and trade while we have no last hits. This creates space for us to be able to last hit safely during our cooldowns, right after as we position defensively. As our Q gets ready to come off cooldown, we start autoing a minion, getting it low enough and positioning ourselves so we can line up the last hit and harass the enemy at the same time, but the enemy dodges it. As Chovy then finishes crashing this wave, he's not only massively ahead in health, having won his lane, but he's also ahead 4 CS. And it's all due to the one rule he follows, never trade during your last hits. To be able to successfully do this, you need the following five concepts mastered. First, look to trade aggressively early on, long before you have to last hit. It's always safe to do this as your cooldowns will then be back up before your next last hit. Second, look to trade aggressively right before you have to last hit. You time it when your next last hit is within two auto attacks. That way you can kite back between each auto and be safe from trades due to the space you initially created with the trade. Thirdly, think two steps ahead when it comes to last hitting. It can help you spot moments where you handshake on one last hit timing, since you know the enemy has to last hit first afterwards. Fourth, if the enemy has the last hit timing on you, try to trade auto attacks if it's reasonable to do so. This can cause your minions to aggro onto them, which stops damaging their minions, letting you then last hit them safely after the trade. And fifth, always look for opportunities to both last hit and harass with an ability at the same time. It removes timing windows from the enemy where they can look to land free trades off your last hits since you'll simply have less of them. Now, if you're someone who finds it difficult to win your lane through trades, then I highly recommend our Master in Minutes course on trading. It's an absolute game changer. This course contains bite-sized impact impactful lessons that are easy to digest and implement in your own games. Click the link in the description below to unlock the full course and level up your trading. Alright, now that last concept of killing minions with abilities to remove harass timers from the opponent transitions perfectly to the second rule of Chovy's laning, master your wave clear breakpoints. For example, here Chovy knows the enemy recall. There is a specific combo of abilities that will allow him to kill the backline. First, he needs to apply one auto to each caster, then cast E into Q into W. By memorizing wave clear breakpoints like this, it allows you to not only wave clear as fast as possible, but it also prevents you from leaving minions at 1 HP and losing them to your minions damage. 
Now, this was a very advanced example, so don't worry, as a weird thing about wave clear breakpoints is that it's actually easier to memorize them by starting at level 9 and working backwards. So, let's just do that and jump ahead to level 9. So, let's take a look at the combo now. Oh, it's literally just casting Q, and you one-shot the casters. That's actually standard on pretty much every mid laner. Once you hit level 9, the main ability you max should one-shot the casters. If you ever find yourself in-game, unable to one-shot caster minions with your main ability, it's likely because you haven't spent your gold in a while. And since level 9 is so easy to memorize, we just have to go backwards to memorize the rest. So let's jump to level 8. Now, a lot of newer Vex players actually mistakenly use E into Q to clear the backline of casters. On the surface, this seems like it makes sense, because a single Q won't do enough damage at level 8 since it only has 4 points in it. However, watch what Chovy does instead. He casts E on the melees, then Qs, which puts everything but the siege minion within kill range of his W. Look how much time you save when you know this wave clear breakpoint. If you cast E and Q on the casters, you're left with a ton of melees to have to kill awkwardly using auto attacks and W. Again, let's keep going backwards. Now at level 7, you can see Chovy uses Q, no other abilities, then a second Q to clear them. And if we go back to level 6, we can see the same wave clear breakpoint, Q, into a second Q. This is because it's not until level 8 you actually put a second point into your W as Vex, which gives you just enough damage to kill all the minions in the combo we taught you earlier. This is why it's so important to practice and memorize breakpoints at each level up until level 9, when your main ability will one-shot casters. If you don't, you'll not only wave clear way slower, which gives you less time to roam, but also remember what we taught you earlier. The more last hits you have, the more opportunities for your opponent to time harass on you while you're last hitting. By knowing wave clear breakpoints, the opponent has less chances to win lane through trades. On top of this, wave clear breakpoints guarantee your last hits, so avoid the common scenario where you leave minions low on health, where they die to your minions, losing you gold. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, this is all great, but I don't play Vex. How do I learn wave clear breakpoints on my champion? Well, to be honest, I could do a massive cop out and just tell you things like go watch a one trick stream or download their replays. But the truth is, it's far faster and more effective if I just teach you how to do it yourself in the practice tool. So let me show you how to do it. I'm going to break it down into three tiers of difficulty, beginner wave clear, intermediate wave clear, and advanced wave clear. So I'm going to use Ari as an example, but just pick whatever champion you want to learn wave clear breakpoints on and follow along. So head into the practice tool, make sure your runes and starting items are what you usually go with. Now we're going to start with beginner wave clear breakpoints. The first thing you want to memorize is when your main wave clear ability will take two spell rotations to clear the caster minions. For Ari, this is her Q ability. So start at level 1 and use your main wave clear ability twice and see if it clears the casters. You can see for Ari it doesn't at level 1. We then try the same thing at level 2. Again, it doesn't. Now, at level 3, all champions have a choice to either put a point in their third ability, in this case it would be my charm is Ari, or put a second point into their main wave clear ability, my Q. When learning breakpoints, always put two points into your main wave clear ability so you can see if you hit that wave clear breakpoint at level 3. In this case, you can see if we put two points into our Q, we can kill the caster minions in two spell rotations. Great, so we now know we hit our first wave clear breakpoint at level 3, assuming we put two points into our Q. We then continue testing this for each level, so level 4, it has the same breakpoint, Level 5 has the same 2 spell rotation breakpoint, same with level 6, and same with level 7. However, level 7 is unique in that it's when you have 4 points in your main ability. So, first test your wave clear without items, then purchase items and test it again at level 7. In this case, you can see with Ari, whether we have items or not, we just can't clear the casters in one rotation of our Q. The reason you want to do this is that some champions will be able to one-shot casters once they've purchased items at level 7, but it's on a case-by-case -case basis. And then we have our level 8 timing, which also takes 2 casts of our Q. And finally, we're at the level 9 breakpoint where we can finally one-shot casters with one Q. Hold on a second, that did not one-shot them. Again, you need to test this breakpoint with and without items. Some champions will need items to hit this breakpoint, some won't. In Ari's case, you can see I need a lost chapter to be able to one-shot casters with my Q. Now, all you have to memorize is as Ari, you can clear casters with two Qs from as early as level 3 all the way to level 8. And at level 9, you can then one-shot them, assuming you bought items. These are your basic wave clear timings, and memorizing these for your champion will put you ahead of most players. Alright, now let's move on to the intermediate level. Well, once you have those basic timings mastered, you want to start testing other abilities in combination with your main wave clear breakpoints. For example, at level 1, as Ari, if we scale Q first, our only other ability is our auto attacks. So, we want to test what it takes to use two Qs and autos to kill the casters. You can see how if we auto each caster two times, we can then clear the casters with two Qs. For level 2, we now have access to our W ability. With this, we can Q the wave, auto each caster once, then cast Q into W, and it will clear the backline. At level 3, we then two-shot the casters with our Q, so there's no variations to learn. Same with level 4. At level 5 though, we do enough damage with our Q that we can then auto each caster once into our W to clear them. Level 6 stays the same, with no new combos. 
However, at level 7, if we bought items, we put casters low enough in one queue that we can finish them off with a W or just one auto attack. This exact same variation exists for level 8, however, with these variations, it's highly recommended to just auto each caster first, then cast your Q, since you keep your W off cooldown, save mana, and don't have to commit to last hits after you cast the Q. So, to summarize, the more advanced variations you could memorize would be level 1 takes 2 Qs and 2 autos on the casters. Level 2 takes 2 Qs, 1 auto, and 1 W on the casters. Level 3 to 8 takes 2 Qs as before. However, at level 5 we can also choose to Q once, auto once, into W. And at level 7, if we bought items, we can kill the casters with 1 Q and 1 auto, or 1 Q and 1 W. And of course, at level 9, we clear the casters in 1 Q with items. Here's the thing though, I don't recommend you memorize all of them, and instead you want to pick the ones that seem the most practical to you. For example, level 1 and level 2 wave clear timings are unlikely to be useful, since you have to use abilities to trade this early on, so trying to use them on the wave will likely lose your lane. Level 5 is also unlikely to be useful, since it's just simpler to use 2 Qs on a wave instead of trying to Q once into landing 3 autos and casting W. However, level 7's variation of autoing each caster once into casting Q is very useful, since we can save a Q cast and do it relatively easy. So that that leaves us with something much simpler to memorize. Levels 3 to 8, it takes 2 Qs to kill the casters. At level 7 to 8, we can choose to auto each caster once into casting Q, and at level 9, we one-shot casters with items. And finally, we have the advanced wave clear breakpoints. Here's the thing, both items and runes can impact wave clear breakpoints. So, what you want to do is test specific runes and items that relate to damage to see if taking them can let you hit an earlier breakpoint. However, it's important you only test ones that are consistent. For example, runes like Eyeball Collection that require takedowns, they don't count. Right now, there are basically three things you would want to test in your rune page. The first is running Absolute Focus, which gives you flat damage if you're above 70% health. The second is Minion Dematerializer. This can give you a massive damage boost to specific minion types. And the third is going full adaptive force if you usually run one attack speed rune. What you test will be dependent on the usual rune page that you run. For example, the standard rune page on Ari is going domination and sorcery. So we'll first want to test absolute focus, then test going full adaptive force. Now, don't worry, you don't have to test every single level. Instead, you want to test the level breakpoint before you're able to one-shot casters. So for Ari, we know that at level nine, we have five points in our queue and we can one-shot casters with items. So we just have to go back to level 7, where we had 4 points in our queue, as this is the last breakpoint before we can one-shot casters. Our goal here is to see if any rune or item combo lets us one-shot casters at this level. So we first test with just absolute focus. We can see it doesn't. Then we buy one item, in this case lost chapter, can see it still doesn't. Then we add one additional item to see if that pushes us over the edge, which is a dark seal, and it doesn't. So we go back to our runes, take absolute focus, along with full adaptive force instead of one attack speed rune. Do the same test again at level 7, with no items we can't one-shot them. With lost chapter, we still can't one-shot them. However, with lost chapter and dark seal, we can one-shot them. You can see how this super advanced testing can let you unlock breakpoints almost no one else knows about. And that's everything you need to find optimal wave clear breakpoints for any champion just like Chovy, from the beginner level to the advanced level. And by the way, if you're someone who finds all the different concepts of wave control overwhelming and confusing, then I highly, highly recommend taking our course on wave control at Skillcapped. It will literally teach you everything you ever need to know about wave control, but in a way that's super easy to understand. You can unlock the full course by clicking the link in the description below. All right, and now is a perfect time to get into Chovy's third rule of laning. Only leave lane once you've pushed your wave first. So this whole concept sounds simple enough on the surface. When you push a wave into the tower, you have a timing window to roam, recall, ward, that will last until the next wave arrives in lane. However, as all things with Chovy, there's more nuance and advanced concepts to this. So first, let's start at the 3 minute mark. I want you to be aware of how long it's going to take Chovy to clear this wave. This is normal in the lower levels, where you have less mana, items, and damage on your abilities. As we finish clearing the wave, let's take a look at where the next wave is. We can see it's at the opponent's inhibitor tower. Now, a nice trick to use to know where the enemy wave is, is to just look at your own wave, since since they'll always be mirrored. So, as we finish clearing the wave, we can look at our own wave, see it's at the inhib tower, and therefore, we know the enemy's wave is also at their inhib tower. This gives you a sense of how much time we have to do things. In this case, you can see it's not that big of a timing window, so we're only able to place a ward down before we have to get back to lane. Now, we see Chovy use the wave clear breakpoint we taught you earlier to clear this wave really fast. As we finish clearing this wave, again, let's check out our minions. They've literally just spawned. Again, we know the enemy minions have also just spawned because they're mirrored. This gives us a much larger timing window window, one that we can use to recall. In this case, Chovy actually decided to teleport back to lane, since his jungler is taking scuttle, his support is roaming, his top laner is pushed. Basically, he wants to keep up his lane pressure to match his team's map pressure. However, it's worth noting, due to how fast he cleared the wave, he absolutely had enough time to just run back to lane without using teleport, and he wouldn't miss a minion. So, 
We're back in lane, let's fast forward until we're done clearing. Again, let's look at our minions. We can see they're at the Inhib Tower again. We know from last time, that's not that big of a timing window. So what does Chovy do with it? Well, same as last time, he uses the smaller window to place wards and get vision. Next wave arrives, let's fast forward. You can see we don't even clear this wave fast enough to get any timing window. Next wave arrives, again, we're very slow clearing it. If we take a look at our next minion wave, we can see it's actually at our second tower. We basically don't even have enough time to move from lane. Next wave arrives, this time we clear it much faster. We check our wave, it's at the Inhib Tower. We know now that's enough time to clear vision, which is what Chovy does. Back in lane we go. This time we clear super fast, check our minions, they just spawned out of base. Last time we used this big timing window as a recall timing. This time Chovy uses it to hit the fruit spawn timing into a nice gank on top lane. And since we roamed on such a big timing window, you can see how we can get back to lane only missing two melee minions. Next wave we look to clear fast, but due to it being a siege wave, it slows us down a bit. Check our wave, it's a little bit behind our inhib tower. As long as we recall immediately, we have enough time to get back to lane, missing minimal CS in the process. The wave after, again, we don't clear it very fast, so we only have time to establish vision control nearby. Next wave, we now use our level 8 wave clear breakpoint to clear super fast. Check our wave, it's basically just spawned, so we have a huge timing window. If we take stock of the map, there's no roams available, and we're not low enough on health or have enough gold to recall. So we use this large timing window to take a plate and do some tower damage. Next wave, clear with our combo, so it's pretty fast. No roam available or recall timing needed, so we default to vision control. Next wave, we look to clear relatively fast again. This creates a recall timing as we have enough gold for lost chapter. Teleport back to lane. We haven't pushed our wave yet, so we can't leave lane. Instead, we're actually able to get the fight inside our lane, meaning we won't lose any CS. We then clear the wave after as fast as we can, creates a large timing window, and we use it to take tower plates. A nice trick here, when the enemy is out of lane, you can actually position under the tower with your wave to damage the next incoming wave really early on, letting you clear it even faster, giving you a bigger timing window. You can see how by the time Chovy clears this, the next wave hasn't even respawned yet, so we have a ton of time. Chovy uses this huge timing window to get the next turret plate into then recalling, and again, a nice trick here. He times his recall on a siege minion wave, which means you'll actually have a bigger timing window since the the siege minion will absorb 8 tower shots, buying you time needed to lose minimal CS as you walk back to lane. Next wave, we push as fast as we can. Again, our wave is just spawning, so we have a massive timing window. In this case, Chovy is using it to place the Herald with his jungler to take the mid tower, and as this tower falls, let's pause. Chovy now has 130 CS in 12 minutes. That's over 10 CS per minute. He has a kill participation of 3, which is one more than the enemy mid laner's 2, and he's 1300 gold ahead of the enemy mid laner. And you just saw how we did this without any crazy mechanical outplays, just by following 3 simple rules. Never trade during your own last hits. Master your wave clear breakpoints and only leave your lane once you've pushed your wave. And there you go. If you start implementing Chovy's three rules to your laning, I can guarantee you'll see results. As that's kind of our whole thing here at Skillcapped, we focus on the things that actually help you climb ranks and simplify them so they're easy to understand. So if you're feeling stuck at your current rank where you just can't rank up no matter how hard you try, then Skillcapped is the solution you've been looking for. We have the most extensive collection of premium courses tailored for every role. And if you're still skeptical, don't worry. You can try us out risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcapped, you get your money back. No questions asked. You can unlock this game-changing opportunity right now through the link below. So what are you waiting for? Click the link to get the rank you've always wanted. All right, and that will do it for this one. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.